Hello, hello. Welcome to those that are joining live. I might just actually put this down so you can see my face. So my name is Megan and thank you for joining into the Love Notions Summer Basic Tank. I'm excited to be sharing this one with you. Uh, I've been watching the chat as I was as I was waiting to go live and I can see we've got quite a few coming in. We've got some from Washington, Kansas, California. Uh, I don't know where Cajun country is. Apologies if I really mess up any of the pronunciations. <laughs> I'm trying my best, but I love being really interactive in these so along. So do jump in the chats. If you've got questions, ask them. I love answering things. So I'm looking forward to joining this one. Oh, we've got a Canadian in here. Osh Oshawa. I hope I said that right. Ontario. Oh, we've got a Queenslander. So we had Helen from Melbourne before. She's one of my students. So I'm excited to have a few Australians coming in as well. It is 10.30 in the morning for us. And I believe it ranges from about 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. in the States. And I had someone ask me about Italy, which is about 2 a.m. in the morning. So if you are tuning in from Italy, props to you. Well done. So I thought I would let you know a little bit about myself. So my name is Megan, as I said, and I am a mum of two children. I have a fur child and I'm also a wife to my husband, Chris. Um, so I'm very understanding of the challenges when it comes to balancing family life, work, you know, all those fun things that comes with being a grown up. Um, but I really find that sewing is my creative escape and it has always brought me immense joy and um, to share with others. Like it's just been my passion to really share with others. So that's why I approached Love Notions about doing this live. So I am one of their ambassadors. You might've seen me pop up on the YouTube channel before and in their group, I've done a couple of things before. So yeah, it's exciting to do this live one. Um, so I have been sewing for over 20 years. I started when I was a little girl. My mum taught me. So, you know, I've had my fair share of challenges over that time. Um, and I've, you know, really worked with quite a variety of techniques. So I'm excited to be able to share my knowledge with you and help you overcome any hurdles and really just elevate your sewing skills. So I know that binding is something that a lot of people are a little bit scared of. I've had a few people comment that, you know, they just banned because binding is a bit scary. But hopefully we can help just really um, overcome those fears. So Sew and Tell Australia is my business and it was really born in 2020 um, as a way to, you know, share what I was sewing and just really... Um, help others learn how to sew. So I've built a really nice community through my membership, which is the Sewing Corner. And I really like to guide you in making sewing, not just a hobby, a hobby, but a lifelong skill and a passion really. So as you can see here, I do have my puppy dog Jethro in the photo too. So he is an Australian Shepherd. Um, I love him. He was my first baby. Uh, and if you hear him bark during this live, I do apologize. He's a very good guard dog when the postman comes and I am expecting some fabric today. So if you hear him drive, um, bark during the live, I do apologize. And I also have my mum's dog here, which we nicknamed the statue because he doesn't do anything. He's a King Charles Cavalier, but he does snore quite loudly. And he is sitting just in front of my sewing machine. So I'm hoping that he's not too loud, but we'll get there. So what we're going to, let me just bring up the next slide. So what we're going to learn today, we are going to learn how to cut out the pattern using a projector. So I'm a projector sewist. I love my projector. It has been a game changer in terms of my sewing output and uh, my skills, just not having to worry about how to print and trace and cut and stick. And so it's, you'll see how easy the projector sewing is. Um, I've 
I'm not going to show you how to set up a projector because that's like a whole other lesson and there's plenty of resources out there but I will show you obviously how it works um, if you've got any questions you can go to the projectors for sewing uh, Facebook group they are amazing if someone knows that link and they can pop it in the chat box that would be amazing um, but I can also link that in the post show notes as well so I'll be using my projector so we'll go through how to construct the main body and then I'm going to show you two ways how to attach the bindings so the one on the neckline I'm going to use my binding attachment so I have a baby lock sewing machine I've got a euphoria which I love um, so I've got my baby lock binder and then I will be using my which way do I go my normal domestic Janome sewing machine when I do the armbands. So I'll do the neckband with my binder and then I'll do the armbands with my domestic sewing machine just to give you an idea of how to do that from as well because I know not everybody has the luxury of having a cover stitch. And then the last thing we'll do is we will also use the, um, excuse me, the cover stitch to do my hemming along the bottom. So again, if you've got any questions at all, let me know. I may stop at various times to have a drink because, you know, I'm talk, 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 talking. But let's get started. So I'm going to bring up my cutting table. Oh, hang on. It's just lost its connection. So I'll just reconnect that. We all love when we have challenges. Um, okay, so I'll bring that across. Okay, so I'm going to move over to my cutting table and I'm going to turn off one of the lights as well because it just helps you see better. All right, so I have a ceiling mount projector. Can you all still hear me okay? The microphone's just sort of over near the... Um, over near the what's it called computer all right so I'll load this up so the first thing I'm gonna cut out oh good thank you thank you Brennan and Helen for letting me know Brandalyn is also an amazing projector sewist, so if you've got any questions, go to her channel because she's amazing. So I'm going to be using a really fun feather fabric. Oops. So this one is from a local stockist in Australia called Ruby Jam Fabrics. They have some really fun patterns. I'm just going to decide which way is up. I don't think it matters. So I have already pre-loaded the sizes I need and I know that I need to grade from a XL on my top to a 2X at my hips. So I have loaded up both those layers on my PDF. And it just means that I can easily grade between the two when I'm cutting them out. So I will... Oh, I've got a barley. That's exciting. What time is it in Bali? I think it's 8.30 in the morning there. I think you're about two hours behind Melbourne. So, just lay this out. So with projector patterns, I generally prefer when they are the pieces are unfolded. So if I had one long piece here, because I think that would be easier. But um, on the fold is still fine. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up my fold where the fold is. And then I actually have a massive piece of sheet metal underneath. So I have just simple magnets that hold down my fabric, which makes it super easy to cut. Now I get my rotary cutter and the lines aren't super clear because I needed to make them darker but that's okay. So I will start with the large on the top 
And then just after the bust at the waist, I'm going to braid out to a 2X down here. And the other thing I will actually need to do is because I am using the knit binding attachment, I need to actually just take off the seam allowance on my neckline. And I'll have to do the same for the back. So I've just taken a tiny bit off, but I'll explain more as I go along. But that is my first piece done. So, Oh good, that's so exciting that you get to go straight to Ruby Jam. I'm jealous. I wish I lived closer. But I have some amazing fabric suppliers here too, so I can't really complain. Alright, I'll bring up my next piece. So what I'm doing is over on my laptop, all I did was move my next piece along. So now I can do this. Do we have any projector sewists in the live today? Let's have a look. Um, Jane has asked, do I measure my fold for if it's straight on the grain? Look, I'm probably a little bit of a near enough is good enough. Uh, if it was a woven fabric, absolutely I would uh, because it's just so important to have it on the grain. But because I'm using a knit fabric and I'm sort of matching up the end pieces and I can see that my lines are fairly straight, I'm happy enough with that. But yes, if you do want to make sure that you have it absolutely dead straight, you can measure it. But one thing I like about knit fabric is that it is a little bit <laughs> forgiving so I'm usually pretty happy and I'm pretty good at um, eyeballing how it looks so now I'm going to cut my back piece so again I'm just going to take off a teeny tiny little bit basically the seam allowance of my neckline because I'm doing the knit binding attachment but I will cut on like where I'm supposed to for the armbands because that was where I'm going to use my domestic machine. So that is my back piece cut. Again how easy is that? We are just absolutely going through. Um, read a couple, turn a couple things. It's so quick. Projector is the best isn't it? Yes please jump in with your projector. Um, Alison said, I was not able to have a permanent out for the projector, having to move every time. Yeah, look, it can be a problem having to calibrate, but I think once you get the hang of it, um, it does become a lot easier. And if you can use a stand, so I know Branilyn has um, plans for a stand on her website, or you can even just use a television mount. If you can have a stand where your projector is at a more consistent height, that can make a big difference in terms of when you calibrate each time. So if you're having trouble having to move it around a lot, I would look at putting it on a stand and then that kind of helps with your calibration more. Okay, now I'm gonna do my bands. So I'll move this along again. Flicking a bit. There we go. I've just fixed the camera because I could see it was flicking a little bit, which is annoying. Okay, so for my armbands, I will cut as per the pattern. So I've chosen to do a purple for this one, and I'm going to cut to the large size because under my arms it is still large so I'll go like this again use my little magnets and then 
then I can cut these up. So one, and then I'll just move this across. Carrie said was under your cutting mat, so um, I've got a large piece of steel, like, what's it called? Yeah, just steel under it. I got it from the local hardware store, and it just means that I can put it straight under. I can just cut straight on top, and the magnets, like, I also got them from the local hardware store. Um, Bunnings or Hannah Barn, if you are a Bluey fan, because we all love Bluey. I don't know if anyone else watches Bluey in the States, but it is a firm favorite in our household. So for my neck band, I'm going to roughly do the size that it suggests. However, I do need to cater to my knit binder. So I've got that just so I can sort of see that that would be the size of the neckband. However, I'm going to have a little bit longer, but I'm going to get my knit binder. And what I'm going to do, hopefully you can see, on my baby lock, it tells me the finished size, which is 12 mil. And then this other number is the size of the strip that I need to cut, which is 42 mil, or it's just over an inch and a half. So I'm going to cut, I'll cut one side. And then what I'm gonna do is cut my inch so that's an inch and a half I need like an inch and what would it be a sixth or anyway it's just over an inch and a half so I'll cut that so here is my neck piece that is going to match for that so that's all my pieces cut and as you saw that is how quick cutting with a projector is. So now I can just turn my projector off. I will put this to the side and I'll turn the lights back on so that we can see. Uh, Barbara said she's got an appointment. Yes, you can definitely watch this later. If you've registered for the event, you will get a notification when it is live. Otherwise, you should be able to check back on the Love Notions uh, YouTube page and it will show you as well. <coughs> so, I'll put that there. I'm just going to turn on the lights again. Oh, I lost you. Sorry. <laughs> Giving you a little bit of um, seasickness probably. Okay, I'm going to change cameras in a second anyway, so don't stress. Alright. Coming back. <clears throat> Hello, I'm back. Sorry, sorry about that last little minute of um, feeling sick myself a drink so what do we all think about the projector sewing so far those that haven't seen it and you know it's definitely an amazing thing okay I'm just reading some of the reading some of the comments yeah how good is using your projector it is really good um, so Dawn asks how does the projector show lines if you're using a dark pack dark fabric um, so I think with the with um, the projector you can actually use some external software to help darken those lines so there's a program called PDF Stitcher which does allow you to like invert the colors excuse me um, 
so if you you can change it to like a, a lime green or a lime pink or whatever color you want it to be to really show up those lines there are some pattern companies that also um, provide inverted pieces as well i've got the hiccups um but it really it's it's pretty easy to change the colors so you don't have to worry too much about that um yeah so i've j j bar tug just asked about that so that yeah you can change the lines to make it more easy so the first thing we are going to do is get my pieces and I am going to get my front and back <coughs> and push this back a little bit so I can show here as well. So this is my back and this one is my front. Uh, Vicky asked, is my projector ceiling mounted? Yes, it is. It is a ceiling mount projector with mirror setup. So my projector, um, I don't have high enough ceilings to mount it straight from the roof. Um, but my husband was a very lovely man and helped me work out how to ceiling mount it. So um, I'll... I'll see if I can change this up. Can you see? That is my projector there. It's really hard to show. <laughs> There's my projector there. So this is the, whoop, the projector and that is the mirror. <laughs> and then it projects it down onto my cutting mat where I can see. So there you go, that is a quick explanation of how mine works. Um, but yes, it is very good. So I've now done one shoulder because I only need one shoulder when I am using, or when you're doing knit binding. So I'm just going to <coughs> serge along this. If I interchange between overlock and serge, it's because overlocking is more common in Australia, whereas I know surging is what is most common in the States, but sometimes my Australianness comes through and I do revert back to overlocking. So I'm just gonna surge this piece. So I've got my shoulder together and now I have one big long piece. Now I'm going to bring you over to my cover stitch. <clears throat> and we're going to have a look at how to use the knit binder. So I'll bring this down a little bit. And I'll push this over so you can still see my face. There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to get my knit binder and what I tend to do, so I might actually pull it out a bit so you can see the whole thing hopefully. So the knit binder sits here, <coughs> I'll get my little screws that I have. And what I tend to do is I place my screws in the binder, like where it sits, but I don't put them down really tight just yet. I want to be able to move it because I want to be able to see where I am going. And then I get a tailor's awl. I'll come back in again. <coughs> Try and get this as kind of good as I can for you to be able to see. Let's try that. So what I need to do is get my, I've set my, my cover stitch up for 
a two thread wide. So I get my fabric and with the right side to the back, I'll bring this over. Oops. So with the right side to the back, I thread it through here. Then I'm going to, with my tailor's awl, which is basically just a pointy, pointy object, I'm going to feed it through here. So I'll bring it around. And then what I'm doing is, the reason that I wanted the piece of fabric longer than what is on the pattern is because I want the opportunity to sew a little bit before it goes onto my garment. Because this is just how I get it all set up, make sure I'm happy with how it's sitting. Okay, all right, let's have a look. So I'll see if I can come in a little bit. So Diana's asked about, oh sorry, no, um, Kate asked about the projector. Like daily shows and stuff said Branel and like, there's some really affordable ones out there. So I'll come in a bit closer. Uh, I've got my wrong one on so anyway so now what I'm trying to do is get this in here and I'm going to sew a little bit just making sure it's all there and again this is why I've got my be able to move a bit because I want to make sure that I'm happy with where it's all going. love when things work for me. I've knit bound so many times and of course when I want to demonstrate it decides that it doesn't want to work. So I am just going to have to redo this but you know what that is part of doing live. You get to see the troubleshooting as well. So I'm just going to pull this out. Still got it all done. Oh, I've lost my. That's why, because it's. Oh, I see. My piece of fabric, my maxi lock stretch was caught. No wonder it wasn't working. So I'll just quickly re thread this. There we go. At least that was an easy fix. Okay, take two. Hopefully this assures you that I am actually sewing live for you. <laughs> because there are always something goes wrong. So. <clears throat> oh yeah, my air threader is amazing. So I'm now lining up the edge of this with kind of the edge of my needle and I'm just going to snip this little bit off and hopefully 
hopefully that lights it up a little bit better anyway so I will re-thread this so I'm just putting it back through my binder with my tailors all and for the person that said before about cutting it diagonally I think one of the tricks is having your tailors all they are really handy to have so I'll bring it around make sure I've got it looking nice so this is my double fold binder so I want to make sure I've got my folds coming around put my foot down <coughs> Now let's see how we go. Oh, that's much, much better. I'm much happier. So I think I'm pretty happy. Oh, I need to probably come over just a little bit. And this is why I had the binder not completely um, screwed down yet because I wanted to be able to make that call about where it's sitting. And then it's kind of just a game of making sure everything's sitting nicely. So this is kind of sitting there. All right, we're gonna forge ahead with that. So I'm going to tighten down my screws. So I've tightened that down. Now what I'm getting is my pieces and let me just see so I've got this is the front so I'm going to start with the back piece and what I do is I grab my tailors all and I just insert it in there. Just want to make sure that doesn't fold over too much. There we go. And then what I'm doing is just watching this piece keeps moving as it goes on. Hopefully this will stop. There we go. And then I'm just binding it on. I don't know why this keeps curling though. That doesn't make me happy. So I'm going to now bind this on. There we go. To go a little bit over this way. Sometimes you do still need to adjust as you go. Depends on where it's all sitting. There we go, that'll be enough. Go around and I'm just feeding, making sure my end is nice. a longer band piece actually. We shall have to wait and see. This is what it looks like on the underside. Let's see if you can see that. It's not really going in the. There we go. 
So that is what your binded piece looks like. So, again, got to love lives. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to very quickly cut up a new piece. Um, yes, I do use Maxi Lock for my looper. And I just use Rasant for my, um, what's it called? Rasant for my needles. So let's recut. I'll do it extra, extra long this time. So cut this out. Sorry for the delay, everybody. Right, so if we go one and that's one and a half. There we go. All right, I've got my extra long piece now. Thank you for being patient. And one of the best things about the cover stitch is it's actually super easy to undo. So all I need to do is get the needle threads. So I'm just getting my needles. Make sure they're pulled to the front and then I can literally pull this off like this. So this is my looper thread coming undone. Yes, so it's my cover stitch machine. I have a Baby Lock Euphoria. It's one of my favorite, favorite machines because it's just so easy to use. So now, that is my bind, my piece that I just used. And now I've got a clean neckline to start again. So I'm just going to fix this bit up. Um, so Carolyn asked, so when you're using the binding attachment, are you stretching the binding? No, I don't generally. That's why I cut an extra long piece because I don't really know how long it's going to cut like how long it's going to need um, so it is a little bit different to when you're using when we do the armband way all right so i'm ready to start again there we go so take two got my extra 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 long piece here re do this bit like so. Does anyone else have a binding attachment that they're, they've not used? It, it does take a little bit of practice and sometimes it is trial and error. I mean, as you can see, I'm doing live and I really hoped that it would just be wonderful the first time, but sometimes things happen. But I do think once you have a play with it, you get a lot more comfortable with how to use it. So while this probably looks frustrating, it's actually not too bad. Once you get it sorted, it is actually pretty easy to use. No, you don't have to be scared. 
Um, it doesn't really alter the way it fits. It just, because we've um, got the neckline, like we took away a little bit of the seam allowance because instead of using the seam allowance, we're just binding straight over the top. Okay. Let's see how that's going to work. Put that in there. Yeah, cover stitch is really good. Um, what model cover stitch do others have? I obviously have a baby lock. I'm actually the Australian ambassador for baby lock. So I bought my cover stitch and that kind of brought me to their attention. And when I was sharing how much I loved my cover stitch, they approached me about being the Australian ambassador. So I was very lucky to be gifted a baby lock serger. Okay, so it's looking a lot nicer now. I'm just going to do a teeny, teeny, tiny bit more over. Alright. So I'm happy with how that's looking. The back is looking really nice as well, as you can see. Okay. So now it's just a case of bringing it around. I'm much, much happier with how this is looking. I wasn't paying attention. That'll teach me. So it is a bit of a trick when you're looking, you know, you've got to pay attention to both where it's binding on your garment and then how it's feeding in at the end. So <clears throat> this bit's probably going to look a bit funny, but it will correct itself and I'll come back and fix it. Yeah, so the binding attachments are fun. <laughs> As you can see, they are a tiny bit fiddly at times, but they give such a beautiful result. <coughs> Excuse me. so much better very happy with that so as you can see this is my bound piece I'll bring this back so I can show you as well that is what the binder looks like and then on the back it looks like that so very pretty. So I'm going to bring it back to my serger. And now I'm using a cotton lycra, Carolyn. Okay. And Stacey said, seam allowance is only removed from the pattern pieces that are going to be bound. Yes. Because I was, because I'm binding them, like the fabric is going straight over the top. Whereas you'll see when we do the other one with the domestic machine, it's a bit different. So now what I'm going to do, we're probably going to run a bit over time too. So I do apologize. If you have to go, that's fine. We can, um, you can watch it back later. So I'm going to sew up my other side, my other seam. Okay. 
and I will untangle those and tie them off. Oh, sorry, I'm not in frame. I will untangle these and tie them off because otherwise they will, they won't work. So now we can do our armbands. So what I'm going to do, I'll pull this back and bring this down so you can see. There we go. Now for the domestic knit binding with your serger as well. So I'm laying out my armband and I'm going to get one of my pieces and I like to fold it in half so I can find my middle and I'm then going to right sides together attach and clip here and then I also am going to attach to this end and then on this end I'm just going to start to surge. So I'm going to need to stretch it slightly between each of these points. So I will bring, bring it in. So that you can see. So I like to get a couple of stitches on just to sort of secure it and then what I do is I'm going to stretch my cotton lycra and I'm, excuse me I just want to make sure that I'm matching up my raw edges as I go so that I know that I'm not missing any of the fabric so I'll pull that forward make sure I'm catching it all I just cut a slight bit off as I search <coughs> Excuse me. Like this. Okay, so Carolyn has asked why am I using this method for the armband and not the way you did the neckline. So this is basically because I'm just trying to show two different ways to attach the armbanding. So one, I used the uh, knit binder but I know not everybody has a knit binder so this is for the people that have a domestic sewing machine and want to use the binding look for that Um, so Helen has asked, can you not use the cover stitch binding tool for the armbands? Yeah, I absolutely could, but the main reason I'm doing it this way is so that people can see both ways done. So that is that one. Now I will get my other side. So yeah, so it is, uh, and if I was doing this for myself, I probably would have just used my knit binder because I find it a lot easier, but because I'm showing everybody how to use um, their domestic machine as well. I am doing both ways because I just think it helps. It helps show both ways and then people aren't um, sort of thinking, oh, well, I can't do that because, you know, I don't have a cover stitch. So let's do this. Again, I'm just going to get a couple of stitches on and then stretch it to suit and make sure I'm getting all the raw edges. So I'm also trying to make sure I'm not surging any of my fabric. Hands up if you've done that before. You've almost finished a garment and then you accidentally surge over something and you get a great big cut in your fabric where you've surged it it's just it's soul crushing when you do that and trust me I've done it I've also sewn hoods on backwards I remember I was so proud I finished a sweater or a hoodie jumper for my son <laughs> and I held it up and the hood was over his face like it was and I 
showed it to my husband and I was like, what looks wrong about this? And he was just like, oh. <laughs> so I had to unpick and start again. And then I think we've all probably uh, sewn a hood to an armband or something. So now I've sewn my neck, or sorry, my arm pieces on. Is that light too much? I might just turn this one off because I feel like I'm getting a lot of glare. See if that might be a bit better, if you can see it a little bit better. So now what I'm doing is, I'm going to, I'll bring this back so you can see what I'm doing. So Dawn has asked, when you're using the domestic machine for spi for binding, do you cut? Uh, it's just, hang on, I can't see the rest of your question. Uh, when using a domestic sewing machine for binding, do you cut 85% of the armhole opening? Um, look, I'm not 100% sure. I used the measurements from the pattern, but I think that would probably work. So what I'm doing now is I am aligning my arm bands, my arm, my side seams, and I will clip here and then clip down to the end, put a few more clips in. And now I'm just going to sew this one together. So I'm just sewing all the way down the side seam. Like so. So I've sewn down one side seam and I'm going to just clip that off because that is going to be hidden in our binding. So that one is going to end up getting hidden in here. So I'm going to repeat to the, repeat to the other side. So has anyone learnt anything new so far? And does anyone have any more questions? I hope I showed the knit binder. <laughs> it's actually really easy. I mean, I know I had a couple of issues, but to be honest, some of that is nerves because it's always a little bit nerve wracking when you go live. And, you know, if I was just doing it for myself, I probably would have smashed this out in like half an hour, but because I'm going live, so there's a little bit of nerves that people will be like, oh, what is she doing? So I'll do this one. So we've done that. Um, Carrie has asked, do you need special need needles on your serger for knits? So that will depend on your machine. So I would highly recommend getting out your uh, manual for the serger. My machine takes HASPX1 or something. Um, but I know that some can take universal, some will take ELX, so it really just depends. But I have now finished those two armholes. So what I'm going to do is pull this out so you can see what I'm doing. 
And what I'm now going to do is... Pull this out and show you. It's looking cute. I'm happy with how this is looking. So what I'm now going to do is fold over my band and I just want to cover the surged edge. So I'll see if I can show you. And then from the right side, so I just think how I'm going to do this here. So from the right side, I now put a pin in it. I generally will only use pins on my knits if I'm doing something like this or if I'm quartering my neckband. Otherwise, I tend to use um, clips because I find them easier to work with. But I'm gently stretching this as I go just to kind of fit the curve. So pulling this around, like this, and then around again, and now my last little one. And I'll show you a better close-up when I've finished pinning it, but this bit sort of takes. Helen said, I'm definitely putting a binding tool on my wish list. Helen actually just got a brand new cover stitch. She bought a Juki 1500. So this is what the armband looks like now. See if I can show you a bit closer. So I'm just going to quickly do the other side as well. So again, like this one's a little bit, the arms underneath aren't as lined up, but that's okay. We can make it work. So I'll just fold it down. It's under the arm anyway. And then gently stretch to fit. Those who have not long had dinner, what did you have for dinner? Because I need inspiration for my family tonight. I've got two young kids who aren't too bad, but they can be a bit fussy. But I'd love to have some inspiration for dinner tonight. Otherwise, I'll just have to throw a couple of shrimps on the barbie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I know that's very um, colloquial, colloquially Australian, except we call shrimps prawns. So, yeah, Lynn said no one should be looking that close at your armpit. Exactly. And if they are looking that closely at my armpit, well, I'm not responsible for any smells that might be down there. They might not want to get too close. So yeah, so this bit's probably the bit that takes the most time is the pinning. So that is a bit done. So I'm finished with my overlocker now, serger, sorry. I'm going to just move it to the side because I'm bringing over my domestic machine. Okay. So, Diane said, your kids want to eat what we eat. We had hot brats, tater tots, and pinto beans. I'm not actually even sure what they are. Is hot brats like a meat thing? And I think tater tots are like, pota like chips, are they? Like hot chips? I think we call them potato gems, I think. So, oops, I've now got, I'm making pressing buttons. 
I've got my domestic sewing machine ready to go. So I'm going to use a stitch length of probably 3.2 will go. Everything else is the same. I do have a stretch needle in my machine. That is very important because you are using a um, stretch fabric. It's important to have your stretch needle in there. I'm using a Schmetz stretch needle of a 9014. And the difference between a ballpoint or a jersey needle and a stretch needle is that stretch needles are typically for when you've got lycra in your fabric and a ballpoint is when it's like a knitted fabric. So like a, a cotton knitted fabric or something. So, um, don't say brat is a sausage fat. Hot dog, oh yum. Yeah, so tater tots, shredded potatoes made into shape of a coin or a small log roll. I reckon tater tots are what we call potato gems because that sounds very similar to potato gems. I'll have to Google it later. So now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna start sewing. So I'll make sure I get it in as much focus as I can. It might actually help if I come from this side. See if I can get it in to show you from this side. That's probably a bit better. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to back stitch a little bit. And then this is about feeling underneath. I want to make sure that my covering is covering my surged um, seam. So I usually pick somewhere on my foot and just follow along the seam line. So I'm going to pick this part of my foot and I'm going to match that up with the seam. And then I'm just kind of not really stretching, but just making it a bit flat, like just making it easy for the machine to glide along. So Tammy has asked why am I not using the lightning stri stitch for knits? You absolutely can, uh, but I'm doing a longer straight stitch because I'm not anticipating a lot of stretch in this. And that's true. Um, Tammy brings up a good point that if you do use a straight stitch in your general knit sewing, they can very easily and quickly pop. But I'm not anticipating a lot of stretch under my arms because these are quite a generous opening. So I'm happy to use a longer straight stitch. Uh, but you could also use a twin needle or you can use a lightning stitch. So I'll put it on a lightning stitch to show you. So this is a lightning stitch. Part of the reason I'm not as well is because it takes a bit longer. I'll just show you as I go. So a lightning stitch could be on your machine. Um, you can also use a zigzag. But the lightning stitch is just like this lightning shaped, funnily enough. Um, and it helps give the, oh, that's stuck. helps give it a little bit more give when you are using it. Rachel Graham confirmed potato gems are tater tots. Thank you. I like tater tots. They are yummy, especially with lots of salt. Um, so Sherry asks, are you doing any other live soon? Yes, I am. So I try to do a public live once a month, but I also do lives and um, special tutorials for my membership. 
which I do have, there will be a special offer for those watching. But I pinned the comment um, near the top with all my socials. So I recommend going and following me. I'm just going to finish that. Okay. Let's have a little looky. So I'll bring this back. For those who I was talking before, there's the useless dog. It's very, <laughs> doesn't do anything. Very funny dog. So here is my arm side. So that's the lightning stitch and that's the straight stitch but it's still got a little bit of give because I did it on the um, longer stitch length and I was slightly stretching as I went so that is that one and you can see it compared to that so I will quickly finish off my other one how are we going for time I can't see what the time is kind of bang on an hour so I don't think we'll be too much longer so I will put this in here. And that one is there. Um, so G said, I was told that if you're using a straight stitch zigzag for knits to make the stitches smaller, we're using the small and denser stitches. Hmm. There you go. Um, Honestly, I am not 100% sure of that answer. It is a good question. I tend to do a longer stitch because I find it a bit better, but maybe it's just a bit of trial and error as well. I will look that one up and confirm for you. And then Ali Garrity said, do you teach classes on how to sew with knits? I am actually releasing a course soon on how to sort of do some knit sewing and how to use your serger. Uh, but in my membership, the sewing corner, every month I release a tutorial which has how to sew. Um, I do a different pattern each month. So this month we are doing a pattern that includes how to insert the zip, Love Notions, maybe one of our sponsors coming up. And then there's a private Facebook group where you can connect with other community members and learn to sew and share your makes and ask questions and get some more personalized advice. Um, I like to bring on industry experts so that we can have a chat about what's happening within the sewing industry. So I had Ashley from Charmed by Ashley on a little while ago. I've had Branolyn from Daily Sews and Stuffs. She's come on and talked about the projectors before. And all those chats and things are always in the portal, the member portal. So you can go back and watch them anytime. I've started doing hot seats, so if you, you know, have a question, say you had a question about the summer basics, you could say, hey, I'm having a problem with step four, and then I can demonstrate live how to help you too. So really my passion is about helping people enjoy their sewing, because I honestly think like sewing is such a great life skill and it's so much fun to make your own clothes and make them fit and you know, personalize them. I just love making all my own clothes and sewing. My daughter is a little bit precious now though. She'll last me like 20 minutes before we've got to go somewhere. Hey mum, can you make me a new dress? Because she knows that, you know, I can make them quite quickly, but generally not 20 minutes before we need to go somewhere, darling. Alright, so I'll just do a lock stitch. Done. Okay. So there we have our two, so 
that's our armband. So I will probably give that a really good press as well. So there's our other armband. So now I'm going to quickly hem the bottom. So let me just find... So I'm going to take off my binder. Yeah, so Kay said longer stitches allow more recovery, whereas short stitches lock down the knit fabric. That's what I had heard too, Kay. Alright, just trimming this. Now I can... Get my hem. So when you are using your cover stitch, if you're having a problem with the hem rolling up, I suggest having sort of a deeper hem. So this is probably, I don't know, about an inch. This. And if you don't have a cover stitch, you can always double needle or twin needle, or you can use a zigzag or a stretch stitch. just going to hem the bottom and we're done. So you can um, press your hem as well, like that will give you a better, like easier to sort of hem, but I'm trying to do it quickly for you. So this is how quickly cover stitches work. I do love my cover stitch. a cover stitch in the round you get a very you know technical do the like a tool thing it's just a hem a uh, gauge pull your threads forward and then you just need to pull it out at the back and then I will tie that off when I get time but I'll stand up and show you all I've obviously got to do a couple of tr um, thread trimmings just to tidy it up. But this is my tank. So I've got my armband here. Let's see if I can show you in sort of a better light. There we go, that's probably better. So I've got my armband here where I did it on the domestic machine. So on the inside, you can see the overlock stitch, but we were able to catch all the knit bind. So you can go back and trim that if you want to. And then on the knit binder, we've got the inside and then we've got the beautiful twin needling on the front. So two different ways to use your, to bind your garment. But I'm really happy with that. I think that's come up super, super well. So thank you for coming along. I'll just bring up my next slide for you. I hope you got a lot out of it. I do apologize for some of the little hiccups, but I think it just shows that obviously um, I'm a human and I sometimes make mistakes as well so and like I said I'm always a little bit nervous when I come on lives because <laughs> anything can happen but thank you for those that joined in so I do have a special offer for those that would like to join the sewing corner um, or have it, have any more questions you're welcome to 
contact me. So the special offer is you get your first month free when you sign up for a three month membership. So the code for that will be L-N-S-A-L. I do need to set up the code. So if you want to check out, don't check out just yet. Um, But I will, there'll be a follow up email for those that have registered um, and you will get the email there and you can check out in either USD or AUD. So um, just a little bit about the Sewing Corner. It's a vibrant community. You know, there's lots of creative people in there and we just have a huge desire to learn and grow together. So, you know, by being part of the community, you'll have support, constructive feedback, a place to celebrate your sewing victories. Like there's lots of different workshops, tutorials. We have resources. You can jump in anytime you need. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced sewer, it is all covered. So you can always jump in and ask me any questions. I am happy to answer. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, Diane asked for the code. So it is on the screen. It's just L-N-S-A-L. So Love Notions Sew Along. It's just shortened. I will fix that code up so that it can work in the USD or if you're in Australia, I'll add an AU to that. So it'll be L-N-S-A-L-A-U. But I will put it all in there and then I hope that you enjoyed. So thank you for everyone that joined in. Um, Okay, so thank you, Megan. It's a lot to manage when live monitors, cameras and sewing on the machine. So yes, I do have multiple cameras going because I like to make sure that you get the most out of it. So that's why I have the camera over the projector so you can see what I'm cutting out. I've got the close-ups of the machines. I do normally have two cameras on my machines, but I'm having trouble with one of them at the moment. But I hope that was fun. Thank you for joining. And um, yeah, enjoy enjoy your sleep, Americans, and those on in the Northern Hemisphere. Enjoy your day, Australian. So I'll send out that email. If you haven't registered, you can go on and register and then you will get all the emails that are coming through. But thank you and I will speak with you soon. Bye, everybody.